So today uh, we're just going to be working off of this uh, area FRQ practice worksheet. Um, Friday uh, we learned about uh, how we have two orientation of of area formula. Either we represent in terms of vertical rectangles, so think in terms of the top graph minus bottom graph, or our orientation uh, is uh, horizontal rectangles, where we think in terms of a right minus left. So uh, previous periods basically was only able to get through this first page, but it's OK because I think this first page kind of demonstrates all the uh, the complexities, all the uh, the subtle differences between the two um, forms, and I think we're going to get a good uh, understanding of all the you know uh, of the, the nuances um, switching from one form to the next, and hopefully it will give us a uh, just a better um, robust uh, understanding of area. And uh, when we get past this point, hopefully uh, this will be helpful. We move into volume as well because volume we're just building on top of this foundation we're tweaking things a little bit here and there with the formula but um but a lot of what we're going to see here is going to be um we're kind of laying the foundational work uh for the rest of this unit so um you, if you have your calculators go ahead and have those out uh i prefer the 84 uh, because you can do more with it you can see more with it um, you're more restricted with the 36 Pro, but um, for now, it looks like we're able to do most everything uh, on a 36 Pro. It just takes a little bit more, a little more cumbersome, uh, but we can we, we can do it. So uh, I'll, I'll show the individual steps for both. Um, so once you guys feel comfortable, whichever calculator that you're using. Um, but um, okay. So let's read this uh, problem here. We have R and S being the regions in the first quadrant. Region R is bounded by the X axis. By the graph of Y equals 2 minus X cubed. And Y equals tangent X. Okay. Region S is bounded by the Y axis. The graph of Y equals 2 minus X cubed. And Y equals tangent X. We're going to first, uh, first focus on finding the area of S. So. For every region, we're going to attack it from both the top minus bottom and the right minus left. Uh, just to let you know, though, on the test, you can pick either form, assuming that uh, both forms are interchangeable. There are, there are some problems that you're kind of forced into one form because you're not able to get it in terms of the other form. So I, that's why I like this problem as well. We can kind of go back and forth, kind of see um, if it is possible to change that we see all the distinctions that we see all the work involved going from one form to the next. So let's let's start with the easier one first. We'll do the top minus bottom. Go ahead and uh, shade in the part that we're focused in on. We're focused on region S. So go ahead and shade in that region S there. This is going to be a top minus bottom um, formula. So we're going to be drawing vertical rectangles. So let's just draw one representative vertical rectangle. And when you draw that vertical rectangle, we're going to make some observations about it. OK. Now imagine that we're going to cover the entire shaded region with these infinitely, now you know, our rectangle is pretty thin, but we're going to have to imagine infinitely thin rectangles from one end to the other end until it fills out the entire region. OK, so let's, let's ask ourselves this question here. Imagine all these infinite numbers of rectangles. OK, are the tops of every rectangle hitting the same graph all the way through? From uh, one end yeah. to the other. It is, right? OK, so good. Yeah, that's right. For the shaded region, that's all we care about, and it is. Is the bottom of every single rectangle hitting the same graph? Yes. yes. OK, so that's good. That means we only need one integral notation to represent area. We don't need a, we don't have a conflict. We don't have a separate top or bottom function that we have to be aware of. So we know all we need is one formula. OK, so 
uh, let's identify uh, some information here. We're going to start putting it into the area formula, and as we start that process, we're going to begin to see what else we need, but then at least we have our, um, we can kind of start building it. Uh, okay, so area equals. Okay, now look at the formula here. We're doing top minus bottom, which means that all of our equations have to be in the form of y equals, which is perfect because every equation that we have was ready to go in that form. There's no adjustments needed. Now look at the bounds here. The bounds is showing x1 to x2. That means we need values in terms of x to represent the bounds. So I like to think of it as from the left to the right endpoint. So what's the furthest left x value that you see of the shaded region? Zero. Zero. Okay, so we see that's just right here. And what's the furthest right x value that you see? On the intersection. Good. We don't know what that is, but we, we can visually tell it's the intersection. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the intersection, use the calculator to help us find uh, that value for us. But we know we need some assistance uh, because this is not going to be easy to solve by hand. We'll leave that uh, upper bound blank because we'll come back to it. Let's just fill out the rest of the formula. Top graph. So we want to ask ourselves, what is the top of the rectangle touching? What graph is it hitting? Y two minus x cubed. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and write that here visually, and then we can put into the formula. What's the bottom of the rectangle hitting? 10x. 10x okay. Now, it seems really obvious right now, um, but I think reading it from a rectangle perspective is going to be helpful. If you can draw those rectangles and then just ask yourselves, all right, what's the top of the rectangle touching? What's the bottom of the rectangle touching? Because Sometimes it may challenge what we think uh, are may challenge our assumptions in terms of OK, the top function must be this because this is what's given to me. Having those rectangles there kind of helps us, you know, clarify that, right? Wait, wait, is the bottom function really what I think it is or is it something else? And having that visual perspective, I think, um, can potentially um, uh, help us avoid some mistakes. Um, and, and, for, and force us to uh, reassess our assumptions. So, but in this case, it's pretty obvious, right? Two minus x cubed is top, bottom is tangent x. So we'll just put it directly into that formula that we see in front of us. So top function first, two minus x cubed, minus the bottom function, which is tangent x. Now, this is a good habit here. Put parentheses around your bottom function, even though you may not need it every time, but it will help catch some needless mistakes in the future, especially if you have multiple terms in the not, uh, sorry in your uh, bottom function, um, because we would hate to lose points because we forgot to distribute the negative through, or we forgot to tell the calculator to distribute the negative through. Now let's look for the upper bound, right? That's the only thing missing from being able to plug in the calculator. I'll show uh, this from a graphing calculator perspective first, and then uh, I'll, I'll move on to the 36 Pro. Right, so we're not going to solve the equation uh, in the calculator. We're going to make it. We're going to make the calculator look for it from a graphing perspective. So, if um, you can go to y equals, we're going to type in those functions. So it doesn't matter what order. I just did tan x first, so tan x and two minus x cubed. Oh, one more thing. Make sure that you're double checking and that your mode is radian mode. A lot of times it may not matter, but for this case, we definitely need radiant mode because we see trig. Ideally, you're always in radiant mode, but just, you know, for some reason, every now and then I see students calculator just for some reason flip over to the other mode. So it's always good to double check. It's going to greatly influence your graph if you don't have it in radiant mode. All right, so let's go back here. Everybody good with Y1, Y2? Now, we're going to graph it, but before you hit graph, let's always have a, a standard graph to start with. So if you go to zoom, and you're gonna pick six, pick zoom six. And that will just ensure that because you may be, you may have previous graphs that have already been zoomed in, and it's, you know, it's, it's a good place to kind of reset your graph. It may not be where you want to be for, uh, for, for viewing what, uh, the parts that you want to view for this uh, problem, 
but it gives you a starting point and you can decide from that starting point. Do I want to zoom in or do I want to zoom out? So standard and hit six, uh, hit enter. And you're going to see that um, we have. We're zoomed out a little far, right? We can see that the region that we care about is only uh, that little portion uh, near zero zero in the first quadrant. So we would like to get a better view of just that portion. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box. We're going to draw a box around that region. And what we're going to do is we're going to aim for the upper corner of the box. We're going to aim for the upper corner. That's where we're going to kind of set our point. And then from there we'll drag and we'll, we'll create a box out of it. So I'm going to target a point upper corner. So go to zoom. And you're going to choose box. You're going to choose option number one. Zoom box. Hit enter. Now use your directional arrow and you should see, you should see a blinking cursor and then move it to where you think is the upper corner of the box that you want to create. And I like to create a box that is slightly outside of my um, of my boundaries where I think I want to be so I can kind of see at least I like to see a little bit further. Um, so here, even though I don't have to technically look at uh, the second quadrant, I like to be in the second quadrant just so I can have some perspective. Hit enter when you think you have, you've reached your upper corner. But just hit enter once. And then you're going to drag using your arrow. Now when you go as far as you want to go, don't hit enter. But rather hit the down arrow and it's going to take that line and it's going to start dragging it into the shape of a box. I like to go a little below the X axis so I can kind of see a little bit beyond. Um, my shaded region. Hit enter and now. Um, the screen is going to zoom in to just that region inside the box. OK, hit enter. Now we should get a good. Picture that is similar to what you see on paper. OK, question so far. Now we're going to look for the intersection, OK, but we're going to make the calculator find it for us. So if you can go to second trace. And then you're going to pick option five second trace and you're going to select intersect okay everybody there so we're going to have the calculator find the intersection of the two graphs for us but we're going to have to tell the calculator which graph to look at i know it seems obvious there's only two graphs here but we still have to tell the calculator which one to to look at so first curve doesn't matter which one but i would suggest pick a point relatively close to the intersection that you see in front of you. So I'm just going to pick a point that is relatively close. Don't pick a point on the intersection, then you're going to confuse the calculator. Make the calculator find the intersection for you. Don't find it for the calculator. So hit enter. Doesn't matter which curve, but now you want to just have the calculator know, OK, you want me to look at that. Uh, um, that tangent X, I'm, I have that locked in. Uh, you should see a blinking cursor on the other graph. If it's not, Use the directional arrow uh, up and down to toggle between the two graphs until you see um, the blinking um, um, point on the other graph that has not been selected yet. So hit enter again. I'm picking a point relatively close to the intersection that I want. Hit enter and now it's going to say guess. So now the calculator says, all right, are you ready for me to find that inter that approximation for you? Hit enter. And they'll find that ordered pair intersection for us. Okay, so 0 0.902 and 1.266. We may not need the full order pair, but I like to put more information than I need just so I can have just in case. Uh, and then for future reference too, maybe I need it down the line. So I'll put um, 0 0.902 and 1.266. All right, anybody? Having trouble with the graphing calculator, finding that intersection. OK, so now we have it, right? So what's um, what's our right endpoint now that we want to use? Remember, both have to be in terms of X, so this right down is now going to be what? 
Uh, it would be 0.902. 0.902, okay? So I'll put that in, 0.902. All right, let's enter this in the calculator, uh, both for the 36 Pro and the 84. Let's do this first. Let's get our answer, and I'll come back, and I'll circle back to talk about how you can find this value using your 36 Pro. So uh, area equals, so go back to your home screen, and then you're going to do math 9 on your graphing calculator to reach your integral notation. So we're going to go from 0 to 0 0.902. You're, feel free to enter everything that you see here. But I'm going to go to VARS just to show that, you know, we can uh, choose from what we've already entered into Y1 and Y2. So I have Y2 holding the 2 minus X cubed minus VARS. Okay, so right now it's not a big deal, but I think down the line, especially if you have a really messy expression and you keep on calling it for different area or volume formulas, you would rather just have it stored in Y1 rather than have to type everything in all over again. Um, but I guess in this case, it's really, it's about the same um, time. Okay, so area equals. One point one six one. On a 36 Pro, there is the integral notation there under you see that above E, that second, that blue notation there. So do second E, take you to that integral notation, and just type everything in as you see as well. Again, make sure that you're in radian mode. If you're not in radian mode, you're not going to get that answer there. So mode, make sure you're in radian mode there. OK, any questions with uh, finding area? All right, let's talk about that intersection here because I haven't gone over how to find that intersection, uh, that 0.902 using the 36 Pro. So if you have 36 Pro, if you can go to, you see num solve there, it's uh, that sign button, but you're going to do second sign. So do second sign, which will take you to num solve. And we're going to, this should be, if it's not clear, then we're going to clear these out here. And we're going to find the intersection between the two functions here, between the y equals tangent x and the 2 minus x cubed. We're going to look for that x value intersection. So let's we'll type it in. We'll say 2 minus x cubed equals tangent x, or 10x equals 2 minus x cubed. The order is not going to matter. OK, hit Enter. Now just hit Enter once. Let me show you something here. Hit enter once. Now you're gonna see x equals. You may, you may see a random number. Put a zero. So right now what's gonna happen is um, it's going to look for the closest intersection from the point that you indicate for the calculator. Okay. And that's um, right now it's not a big deal because there's only one intersection. Doesn't matter what value you choose, it's gonna find that intersection for you. But if there were multiple intersections, it's only going to find the one that's closest to the point you indicate. So if there's another uh, intersection that's over at like nine point something, then you have to choose a value that's closer to nine and they'll find that intersection for you. So um, if there's multiple intersections, you got to look for it separately. Uh, it's not going to find it all at the same time for you. Um, but in this case, we know there's only one intersection. It's close to zero. Uh, hit enter. And now it's going to hit enter again, and it's going to find that X value intersection for us. 0.902. Okay. Again, you're going to go to num solve to get that. So second sign will take you to num solve. Okay, any questions there? All right. So. We're going to find region S again, 
but now from a right minus left perspective, we should get the same answer, but this is going to be a lot more involved here. But it's going to be good practice for us to see uh, how to deal with right minus left. If you know, especially when everything is given to us in terms of uh, for set up for for top minus bottom. Um, but it's good for us to to see it. Any questions with um, this first part here? Everybody OK? No. So same region, we're still looking for area S. If you guys can um, highlight that or. Shade that in. OK, so now we're going to explore this from a right minus left perspective, which means that our rectangles are now going to be horizontal. It's not going to be vertical. So if you can just draw a representative rectangle and we can decide if there's anything that we need to adjust. So that horizontal rectangle serves a couple of purposes. It helps us identify the right minus left. It helps us determine if we need more than one uh, rectangle. Uh, and also it helps us understand that that is how the rectangles are being stacked. They're being stacked above and below each other uh, from one end all the way to above. So we have infinite rectangles below this one that we drew and there's infinite rectangles above it. OK, so let's ask ourselves this question here. As we stack all these rectangles, are the left end point of every rectangle hitting the same graph? Yes, yeah, they're all hitting this vertical line. And what's the equation of this line? OK, yeah, so y axis, but the equation for that uh, line is x equals zero. OK, x equals zero. So we we know the left end point is good. All right. How about the right end point? Is the right end point of every rectangle we can imagine hitting the same graph? No. It's not right. There's that dividing line where there's a sudden switch. So if you guys can draw that dividing line here where the intersection occurs. So I have a rectangle above it, which is good for that upper region, but I'm going to draw a rectangle below it to represent that there is a different. Um, a different orient or there's a, a, a different functions involved, different equations involved for the bottom rectangle. So. Now this is a big hint. This tells us all right, we need two separate area formulas because we don't have a consistent right graph all the way through. OK. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the order pair. This order pair is going to come in handy again. Maybe not everything within the order pair, but we'll see what we need when we get to it. OK, question so far. Here's another big adjustment that we need if we want to do right minus left. The other adjustment is that the equations have to be a certain form. You see how before all these equations are nicely set up as y equals. When you see y equals, you know that those are perfectly set up for top minus bottom, but they're not perfectly set up for right minus left. For right minus left, we have to have this form of x equals. And you can tell that there's some work that needs to be done, right? These equations are not fit for right minus left. So we're going to spend some time rewriting our equation so we can get it into the right form. So let's do one at a time. Okay, let's start with the tangent x and see if we can get it into the right form, and then we can tackle the y equals 2 minus x cubed. All right, how can I get x by itself for this first equation? Um, Good, so we don't do anything like dividing by tan, right? But we do move that tangent over by involving inverse. So Oscar, you said our tangent, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to say inverse tangent just because it matches uh, our calculator a little better. Um, but our tangent is fine. It's just maybe visually it's more helpful because the inverse tangent is the notation that you see in the calculator. OK, everybody good there? So we're able to isolate the X by itself, and that's exactly what we need if we want to do the right minus left formula. All right, let's uh, solve for x for this other equation. So I'm going to move the x to the left. I'm going to subtract y to the right. OK, 
Okay, how can I resolve X? How can I solve for X here? Uh, cube root, yeah. root. alright, cube root. No need for plus or minus, right? We only save that for positive uh, roots. All right, the equations that we need are ready to go. Let's go ahead and point to exactly where we're going to need it. So I'm just going to make it easier here. We know that this is referring to the 2 minus x cubed, which is really the cube root of 2 minus y. And then this part is the tangent here, so I'm going to say x equals inverse tangent of y. All right, we may not have everything that we need yet, but let's just start our area formula and then if we realize that we need something, we can go, we can um, appro um, approach it from there. So let's do this. We know we need two formulas, two area formulas. Let's start with the bottom one. And let's piece by piece work in the formula. So notice we have some adjustments here, right? For top, for top minus bottom, we're looking for bounds in terms of X. We're going from left to right. But if we're doing right minus left, we're looking for bounds in terms of Y, which means that we're looking for the lowest, the highest Y value of our shaded region. So let's, let's start with the bottom shaded region first. What's the lowest y value that you see of the bottom shaded region? Zero. Zero, right? Just that point there. Okay, good. What's the highest y value that you see of the bottom shaded region? 1.2. Good. Right now we're talking to the y value, right? We don't we don't need that 0.902. Now, if you have the 36 Pro, you don't know this point yet. Okay, but we'll come back to it. I'll show you how you can find that because you're not given the full order pair like before. You got to look for this independently. Okay. okay. So we're ready for our formula here. Right minus left. What's the right end point of my bottom rectangle touching? The um, 10x. Okay. Uh, yeah, but we got to adjust it, right? The inverse tangent oh, y. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. That's the right graph. M right minus left. What's the left end point of my bottom rectangle touching? Um, the x equals zero. X equals zero. Okay. Okay. Dy. Plus. Now let's move on to the upper region, the upper shaded region. What are the bounds going to be? What's the lowest y value that you see of the upper shaded region? Um, one point two six. Yeah, we're going to pick up where we left off, right? We stopped at 1.266, and then we're going to pick up where we left off, and we're going to build, go from there, 1.266. And what is the upper, what is the highest y value of my upper shaded region? How did you find that? I just plugged it into the original equation, so 2 minus x. Good, so, uh, yeah. yeah, so if you, if you think of it in terms of, well, that's just basically the y-intercept. And y intercept just means that I'm going to re replace x with zero. You can find that value to be two. Um, I think that's probably the easier way to go about it. Another way you can do it is you can see that, well, that point is the intersection of my cube root of two minus y with zero. And if I set these equal to each other, I can also find that this being the y value. So if you want to do it that way, that works as well. I can say that's the intersection of cube root of two minus y with the y-axis, they're both in the form of x equals, so if I set them equal to each other, I cube both sides, I get 2 minus y equals 0, and I get y equals 2. Okay, same result, but we have our upper bound now, which is 2. Okay, right minus left, we have to finish that process for the upper region. What's the right endpoint of my rectangle hitting? Um, cube root of 2 minus y. 
right minus left. And what is the left end point of my upper right angle hitting? So x to zero. Zero. Good. Okay. The rest can go in the calculator. Now, let me before I forget, I want to talk about how you can find that 1.266 using the 36 Pro. So the 36 Pro is that right? We we don't have the uh, the option to find that order pair like on the graphing calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the two equations equal to each other. The inverse tangent y, because we know that this point is the intersection of these two y graphs here. Inverse tangent y with cube root of two minus y. So if you go to um, num solve, now I'm going to type this in. Now, when you enter anything in the calculator, you only use X's. You're not going to, even though there's an option for Y, it, it's not going to come out clean or the calculator is going to complain. So we have to make those adjustment equations, right? So inverse tangent of Y, or in this case, inverse tangent of X, equal to cube root of 2 minus Y. So do three. And then once you hit three, you can choose that um, that root option. So three, you see that there is a root option there. So second X exponent, that's going to force that into a root and then two minus X. Again, I'm going to choose a point that is starting at zero. I'm going to look for an intersection close to zero. Again, it may not matter for this problem because there's only one intersection. And we should get that 1.266. Good. All right, any questions there? So again, num solve, we just need to have a different set of equations. OK, we're ready to put this in the calculator. Again, only use X's for your calculator. And we should get the same result. We should get 1.161. Now, let me point something out here. Look at all the equations that we entered in to our formula. Look at look at the form that we're using here. X equals X equals X equals right. They all have a very specific form, so that's a good indication. If you see X equals whatever's on the right side, those are expressions that are ready to go, ready to be inserted into your formula. If it doesn't take on the X equals form, we got to reassess, right? Maybe I'm not looking at the right place or maybe um, my equation is not right, but look at how consistent this is. If I'm doing top minus bottom, the only thing that I insert here are equations that have that form. If I'm doing right minus left, the only um, form that I'm taking on that can handle uh, what goes in here has to has to look like this, has to look like X equals. Okay, if it doesn't, then you're using a wrong equation. Okay, we enter this in our calculator. Make sure you're submitting X's wherever you see these Y's. And so area is equal to this first region should give you point um, six six three nine. The second, the, uh, the region that's the upper region should give you 0.4965. And that's going to total to be 1.161, which is consistent because the same area, we just found it a different way. Mr. Yu, yes. Do we have to use the right left? Right minus left method because I like the top minus bottom method. OK, so that's a, that. I think that's a good question. So if you had the option to go back and forth. Then. You can definitely choose the easier method. Now I forced this on us because I want us to see how we move back and forth between top minus bottom and right minus left. But there may come a, a situation where it's not as easily interchangeable between one form versus the other. And if it's not easily interchangeable, you may be forced into one form, whether you like it or not. So this. These equations are nice and interchangeable. We can solve for X, we can solve for Y, but not every equation is set up where we can solve for X or solve for Y. Sometimes we're forced in a situation where we try it. We try to solve for X and we can't because there's the variables don't work out. So 
right now I'm showing us um, both ways, but if you had the freedom to choose between two options, you're free to choose whichever method you think is easier or, or one you want to use. But the reason I'm showing this to you is sometimes you're forced in the situation where you have to do it this way. Okay, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so. But this is as hard as it gets in terms of the amount of things you got to watch out for, right? This problem, we have to decide, oh, we got to deal with two separate regions and we have to convert all the equations to be in the right form. We have to look for the intersections with our calculator. And right, this is a lot, right? We'll much rather prefer this method, but I think it's good that we um, are trying to wrap our heads around, around this method as well. Okay. All right, let's go to region, at, uh, region R. Let's go to top minus bottom. And let's shade in region R so we can see exactly what we're dealing with here. Okay, top minus bottom. So uh, let's draw one representative rectangle just to have some perspective and then we decide if there's anything that we need to um, be aware of. So I'm gonna draw a vertical rectangle since we're doing top minus bottom here. So imagine there are infinite rectangles vertically drawn from one end to the other, to the left and to the right of the rectangle that I have uh, placed. Is the bottom of every rectangle hitting the same graph? No. Or yes. yes okay, it is, right? And what's the what's the equation of that bottom? Y equals zero. Okay, I'll put y equals zero here as if because we know we're gonna need it later. Okay. What about the top? Is the top of every rectangle that we can imagine hitting the same graph? No. It is not. Good. So that means that's an indication that we need to rely on two separate area formulas because the top function is not consistently all the way through my shaded region. And we see there's a, um, uh, the break is here at the intersection, right? The intersection is where there's a sudden change in the top of these rectangles that we can draw. So to the right, I'm gonna draw a representative rectangle to indicate that I need to find a separate formula for that. Uh, the intersection that we found from before is going to come in handy again, so I'm going to put that order pair in place. We can see what we need. We need two separate integral formulas. We're going to go to our area formula for top minus bottom, so let's see if we can put all the pieces in place. All right, let's do the left region first. Let's do the region with the left rectangle in it. Okay. We want to go from the furthest left to furthest right. What's the furthest left X value that you can see? Zero, Zero. Okay. okay. What's the furthest right that you can see of the left region? Point out of two, all right. We're focused, we're back to the X value that 1.266 is not gonna be uh, relevant uh, for this formula. Okay, we're ready to do top minus bottom. Our equations are all ready to go. They're all Y equals. These are perfectly set up. There's no need to adjust our equations. All right, what's the top of the left rectangle touching? Which graph? The 10X. 10X. Top minus bottom, what's the bottom of the left rectangle touching? Uh, y equals zero. Y equals zero. All right, so notice how this is different, right? The top minus bottom is not like before where we're just doing the two equations. Having those rectangles drawn is giving that indication that, oh wait, that bottom function is not the two minus x cubed, it's the y equals zero. 
And I think having those rectangles there kind of helps us um, focus our attention, right? If you look at the top, look at the bottom, whatever is touching, that is the functions you want to use. OK, so that's the left region. Plus, let's do the region on the right. Okay. What's the furthest left X value that you see of that, where that right rectangle is located? Point out. So we're picking up where we left off, 0 0.902. And what's the furthest right endpoint of the shaded region for the right side? 1.259. So how'd you find that? Um, you plug it into the um, y equals, um, or x equals to the y, negative y plus 2. Okay, so you solve for x. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, we know that this is the x intercept of the 2 minus x cubed. So you can also think of it as that's the intersection of the 2 minus x cubed and the y equals 0. So I'm looking for the x intercept. I can say 2 minus x cubed equals 0. Solve for x. x cubed equals 2. It's not a nice number here, but cube root of 2. We can work it out by hand. Or sorry, we can algebraically solve it by hand, but you can use a calculator to get that decimal value. And that decimal value is 1. Point, what is it again? 1.259. OK. Now, real quick, another thing that you can do is you can look for that x intercept using your graphing calculator as well. So if you go to graph, if I'm looking for that uh, x intercept, I can do second trace and then you can pick that zero feature. If you pick that zero feature, you can make the calculator find that x intercept for you. So if you do second trace zero, hit enter. You know what you're looking for but you're going to make the calculator find it for you. You're going to tell the calculator, OK, um, well, make sure that you're toggling to the right graph here. And you're going to pick a point to the left of the X intercept, hit enter. And then pick a point on the other side of the X intercept, hit enter. And now it's going to find that X intercept for you, which is the same point there, 1.259. So second trace zero can also help you find X intercept if you don't want to solve it by hand. OK. Uh, the rectangle on the right, what is the top function? Uh, it's 2 minus x cubed. Good, 2 minus x cubed. Top minus bottom, what's the bottom of the rectangle, right rectangle touching? Zero. Zero. So we have everything, right? Enter those into the calculator and we'll total those separate regions and that will give us the full area of our shaded region. Any questions with top minus bottom for region R? For each of the regions, did you just plug them into your calculator and then add them? Yes, yeah, I plugged all this in the calculator. So um, practice this. If you're having trouble arriving at these answers, let me know. But yeah, you're right. These, these are all calculator work. I just, um, I just skipped. Um, showing it and I'm just jumped to the area figure that I showed enough but do you guys need to see any of these or are you guys good all right are you ready for the last part here so we're going to uh, approach region R from a horizontal rectangle perspective so go ahead and shade in that region Let's draw one horizontal rectangle so we can have something to start with. So 
So imagine you have infinite rectangles below that, rec that horizontal and above it, but the important thing is you know how they're stacked. They're stacked horizontally, one, uh, one above each other. Okay, let's, let's explore the, the left and right endpoint here. Is the left endpoint of every imaginable rectangle with shaded region, is it hitting the same graph? Yes. Yes, okay, that's a good sign. Right endpoint, is the right endpoint of every rectangle hitting the same graph? Yes, so that means all we need is one in a row notation. We don't have, to, it's not separated like how we did before. Okay, so that also goes to show that not every right minus left is going to be split, right? It really depends on the graph. We see that it's split for the top minus bottom here, but not split for the, for the right minus left, but then it's the other way around for this region. So it really just depends um, how it plays out and, and the layout of the graph, but we have to just, um, we have to explore each individual part separately. We can't make any assumptions. But the nice thing here is everything, all we need is one integral notation. We did all the heavy lifting already for part B. So everything that we need for right minus left, we can just carry it down from the equation we've already built that we've already identified from part B, right? If we want to do right minus left, we need everything. We need y values for our bounds. We need right minus left. We, we need our equations as x equals. and We've already found all that from part B, so I'm going to just carry that information down. So the y equals 2 minus x cubed. That can be adapted to be rewritten as x equals cube root of 2 minus y. And the y equals tangent x, we know that we've adapted that already to be x equals inverse tangent of y. And then we're, we may need that order pair, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that order pair in. 0 0.902 and 1.266. So right minus left. Uh, let's look at what the formula says. The formula says I need y1 to y2. I need the lowest to the highest y value of the shaded region. All right, what's the lowest y value of my shaded region? Uh, zero. Zero, yeah, right at the x-axis. Okay. What's the highest y value of my shaded region? 1.66. Yeah, y value, good. Okay, let's go to our rectangle. All we need is one rectangle, so all we need is one formula. What's the right endpoint of my rectangle hitting? Um, it would be. Oh yeah, uh, inverse tan. Oh, yeah. Careful, right? I mean, it is the right. Uh, if we're looking above, but the shaded region is is flip flop. So if you look carefully, it looks like the right endpoint is that cube root of two minus y. Okay. Yeah. Right minus left. Okay. What's the left endpoint touching? Uh, now it's inverse tangent. OK, good. Make sure you have the right form, which we do. Everything that we see is in terms of y. All we see are y's. Our bounds are in terms of y. And now we can enter in our calculator. We should get the same answer. But when you enter in the calculator, make sure you use x's. Don't try to force y's into your calculator here. So the cube root, I'm going to hit three, and then the second um, radical there, x raised to the, I'll force that cube root in place, two minus x. Okay, minus inverse tangent of x. On paper, you, you're writing in terms of y, but in the calculator, you have to use x's. We should get the same answer. All right. Any questions? OK, this yes. good. Can, do, can you just yes. go over like how you determined um, which sides like at the very beginning you decide um, the furthest right and furthest left? Sure. Um, 
So we understand that if we want to do right minus left, we're drawing horizontal rectangles, okay? And we know that the equations that we need have to be adapted. So I just brought all those down from what we converted, right? We converted the equations already, so I brought them down. So are you good so far with, with these equations? Yes. Okay, so um, you see how this uh, y equals two minus x cubed is this graph right here. I'm gonna highlight it in, um, in, in pink here. And then the tangent x is this graph here, which I'll highlight in yellow. So this pink graph is two minus x cubed, which I'm gonna rewrite as cube root of two minus y. And then this yellow graph here is y equals tangent x, which I've rewritten as inverse tangent of y. And now you look at the rectangle that you drew here. Okay, what is the right endpoint of the rectangle touching? Because we have to do right minus left. So if we want to do right minus left, we have to pick out the correct equation for both for both locations uh, for our equation. So you see how the right endpoint of the of this rectangle is touching the pink graph, and this graph is the yeah uh, two minus y. So that that's what comes first. So do okay. right minus, and then the left. You see the left endpoint of my rectangle is hitting that yellow graph. And the yellow graph is the inverse tangent of y, so that's what goes there. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay, good. Good. Any other questions? So, can you verbalize for me what issue you're having? So, I just have perspective for other students who may be thinking what you were thinking. Or where was the confusion? I just want to just have an idea. Um, it was just kind of it was um it was just confusing for me to figure out like when you're looking at um, um the furthest right versus furthest left like I was thinking um it would be like x versus zero and then earlier like we had to solve for like the intercepts like when we go to the calculator so I was just trying to figure out like when you have to solve for that and when you could just plug in the the equations that we found earlier. I don't right. know if that like, makes sense. Yeah, so I guess sometimes it is uh, requiring us to kind of look at the equation, um, but it is also, yeah, identifying, yeah, using the rectangle that we draw to kind of help lead, to kind of help guide uh, how we want to order them. So, so yeah. Okay, guys, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with me. I know this is, uh, uh, went a little bit over, but, um, um, I think tomorrow we're going to be able to maybe do a little bit more practice with area, but we do need to move into volume. Uh, so we'll start volume tomorrow, but I'll, I know we only did one problem, but I think we really explored all the ins and outs of area with this one problem. And we can kind of just build on this um, for other area problems as well as for volume. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, see you tomorrow.